Welcome to the 30 minute acrylic portrait where we paint an acrylic portrait a la prima in about a half an hour. Hope you're doing well. And today we're working on a side view portrait, a side profile portrait of a woman looking into the light with reddish hair. Um, she's got slightly darker skin tones, but with a strong lighting on her face, it's going to be excellent contrast uh, against the background. And I think this will be a really fun one to paint. Um, this is a exercise where you can get a little bit faster at your painting skills um, without all the fuss. You can use a painting like this as a study. You could use it as a foundation to do additional painting on top of with the glazing technique. Um, but it's just a good way, I think, to keep our skills sharp. So um, I'd encourage you to give this a shot. But hey, if you're struggling with your portrait painting right now, you might have a portrait in your studio you're frustrated with, you're ready to throw it into the closet. I'd like to help you with that. I have a free downloadable guide called Fix Muddy Skin Tones in Your Acrylic Portrait. And you can get that guide right now just by going to the bottom of the video here. Um, in the description of the video, I have a link. And then also in the top comment, there will be a link. Uh, fix muddy skin tones in your acrylic portrait. It's going to help you to discover why you have muddy skin tones in the first place. Um, color choices on how to keep that from happening in the future. And also just some good concepts and painting in general. Um, but go ahead and get that guide right now. It's going to help you out a lot. My gift to you just for watching this video. All right. Well, I want to open up with a word of prayer here and we're going to get started here on the portrait. So Father, we come before you in Jesus name and we thank you for this opportunity to paint. Thank you for every uh, skill you've given us. And Lord, I just ask you to show me how to uh, paint this well so the students watching could be benefited by this. And I pray they'd be able to put this into practice on their own portraits or try out a 30 minute painting of their own and benefit from that. I just ask you bless this time in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, so let me go over the um, colors we're going to use here. Uh, we've got ivory black, raw umber dark, burnt sienna, raw sienna, ultramarine blue, lizarin crimson, naphthal red, organic or pyro orange, Indian yellow, and titanium white. I have a little bit of matte medium here in the center just to get certain parts a little bit translucent. And uh, that's how we're going to paint this. And I'm just using uh, some standard brushes like, you know, flats and rounds. Um, we have a like a half inch flat. We've got a quarter inch flat. And we've got a couple of rounds here. And then I am going to go ahead and I'm going to put this timer up on the top here. And that's going to make sure that I stay on track. So I'm going to set this here for 30 minutes. And we'll begin. Just make sure I have it at 30 minutes. There we go. All right. So the first step here is to kind of block in the overall composition. Again, this is all a la prima. Nothing is sketched out beforehand. I just have the canvas. It's an eight by 10. It's toned gray. Um, but we want to kind of block in the composition. And I do that using a mixture of paint and matte medium. Um, so let's go ahead and show the palette here. I'm going to take a little bit of um, ivory black and raw umber dark and then mix that with matte medium and use a round brush and get that very translucent here. You can see we just kind of swirl that around. And then with that, we're going to use that to block in the composition. So, um, I want to get the overall shape of her head in, and that's the main thing. You start with that. So we want to decide where we want the head to hit on the top here. Probably not up too high. Need to move this top part of the easel so we don't have a shadow on the canvas. And we want to get the overall shape of the head in and leave a little bit of room on that right hand side. That'll be important too. Let's try to keep everything fairly loose right now. A couple of angles in here, the nose, jawline, and so forth. That's the main thing. 
Where is the ear going to go? We want to make sure we have the ear positioned correctly in relationship to the eyes. I do kind of want to just block out a little bit of the structure of where we're going to have the cheekbone, shadow of the nose, and so forth. Right there. Just so we know where to plot out some of our major shadows here. We don't have a lot of time to really go super in depth on this, but we do want to at least get some of it outlined as much as we can. So we have our shoulder here um, and our clothing. Hair kind of comes down like that. I'm not going to paint in the uh, Bluetooth on her ear. I just don't really care for it aesthetically, so I'm going to leave that out. Um, there we go. Have her hair right here like that. Eyes right there. So that gives us a little bit of an idea what we're going to do with the structure. And again, we trying to get in the major proportions, shadows for the eyes, eyebrow, or sorry, cheekbone, nose structure, and so forth. Now, let's go ahead and uh, block in the major uh, shadows that we see here. And we'll do that using our larger flat brush. And yeah, we're going to block in the shadows. So let's mix a color for that with raw umber dark and a bit of titanium white and burnt sienna. Add a little more burnt sienna to this and titanium white. Maybe just a little bit of natural red to warm that up. Let's kind of check and see if I'm on the right path. I think I'm pretty, pretty close to being on the right path. So let's be a fairly warm color here. And we're going to put just block it in in the shadow area. We're doing the skin tones right now. So just try to brush as aggressively as you can. Okay, we'll just fill this in. And this canvas is really kind of just absorbing the paint. That's okay. Get a little bit of the shadow structure in here for the nose area, the lips, and so forth. All right. And let's, uh, you can also get in her neck. Fill that in a little bit. Just try to leave a bit of the uh, shape of the jawline here. And we have the shadow here for the chin area right there. Just leave a little opening for that. Okay. And let's go ahead and uh, block in the hair color too, because I think we can use this same color uh, for that purpose. If we just add um, some natural red bit of uh, organic orange. Let's get us a nice, nice warm color here for the hair. Let's add a little more burnt sienna. Nice rich color. Maybe just a bit of raw sienna to help that color cover. Excuse me. Uh, we'll go ahead and place that on there right now. Yeah, that's pretty strong. I'm just going to tone it down a bit with Romber dark, not too strong. Okay, that's good. Just to get some of that reddish coloring in, and I'm going to add just a bit of natural red to that. Raw sienna again. Just wanting to get kind of that main color here.
Got a little more raw sienna now to the left hand side and titanium white and organic orange. And we'll just get something a little lighter as we get towards the back here. Just blend those together a bit and kind of turn that form up here on the top. Add some uh, red, just kind of fill this in on the bottom. There we go. Okay. Got a ponytail, let's get that in there. Okay, now we'll want to do the highlights and for that we'll take a round brush. Uh, so let's grab a big amount of titanium white. Big amount of titanium white and Indian yellow and raw sienna. A nice lighter color here and that's going to go um, for the highlights. We're going to put that in right here. You have the you know, the eyebrow ridge. Make sure we get that in, and we kind of blend in a little bit of a darker version of this with uh, burnt sienna, and we'll go ahead and use that on this lower area. So we have a color that's just a little bit darker. We want to get that plain for the nose and I'll get the upper lip area, get that in. And a little bit of the plain for the bottom part of the chin. Okay. Get a little sense of shading on the side here as we just kind of coalesce these colors together. Now I'm going to get a little warmth from the hair color here in the shadow and just a bit more raw or dark to this. And we're going to place that right in here for this uh, area around the eye socket. Now get a little transition We'll blend. All right. And you get a little bit of a blend on the top as well. These skin tones. Maybe a little bit more blend. Okay, now let's get the highlight for her hair on the top. Take some titanium white, add it to the top part of this mixture with some Indian yellow, and then just a little bit of raw sienna. A little matte medium to make that fluid, and we're going to add this to the top here. Going to need a little bit of a darker color. Let's add some a napple red and a bit of burnt sienna. Just get a slightly darker tint. And we're going to place that kind of along the edge of the color to get that elation effect where we have a warmer color next to the juxta juxtaposition between light and dark values. And that helps that to really pop. Just get a bit of a lighter color right there. 
Okay. So now, um, let's do a little bit of work on the interior of the face. We need to get the eye socket set. Got to think of a color we can use to kind of break that down. I'm thinking a slightly cooler tone with raw or dark for that. We'll mix on the interior here. And add just a tiny bit of alizarin crimson. A little bit of ultramarine blue. Get that color a little, just a bit cooler. And we're going to place that uh, right on the interior here. Got to go darker. Let's add just a bit of ivory black. Ultramarine blue. So have it go a little bit darker. Okay. Let's give this a shot here. We got to get a nice dark color here for this. As we're showing this shape of the eye socket. And this is a tricky shape to get because there's a lot of nuances to it. We have to kind of simplify it with the time we have. And I'm going to add a slightly warmer color below that I'm going to pull from the middle part of the palette. And that's going to be the bottom lid. Get just a bit darker with that. All right, let's get a little bit of shading on the interior of this, of the nose. Kind of a warmer color. I'm going to grab a much darker color quickly. Kind of put that on the bottom. Yeah, and I can see that this eye shape needs to come up a little bit higher. Let's just bring that up a little bit higher. I'm going to use a highlight color to kind of move that up a bit more. And then I'm going to add a little highlight on the top with the titanium white. Maybe just a bit of romber dark and alizarin crimson. Okay. Let's get that up a little higher because I had it too low. And we'll get this bottom ridge up higher as well. Then we want to get the sclera in there. Just try to keep it as simple as we can here. We use the cheek coloring here just to sculpt the nose a little bit more as we lighten that up a bit. Get a little bit of titanium white. We'll put on the nose. Really try to get that strong highlight right there. And a strong titanium white highlight right on the top of the forehead. Add a little more highlight to the eye. And we need a highlight on the nose as well with a slightly warmer color. Okay, and then we've got the lid on the other side, which is primarily titanium white. Endeavor to get that in. Up a little higher than the other one. And then we've got the uh, fill trim below the nose. Just 
just get that a little bit lighter as well. Now let's get the bottom lip in, which we want to use, uh, let's see, titanium white, a little bit of pyro orange. Let's go ahead and place that in here. Trying to get the shape of that now. Take some raw umber dark and a lizarding crimson. And we're going to get a darker color that we'll place uh, to the left side of the lip. And I'll get a little bit of a warmer color here. We're going to add to this main lip color to kind of tie them together. This would be more of a mid-tone. Go kind of on the bottom of the lip. And let's take some titanium white and add that to the top here. Get the highlight in. Add a little more titanium white on the flesh tones under the eye. And there's a shadow that I need to adjust the shape on. So let's go back to this darker color in the middle. And we will just adjust that shadow there. Showing that bottom part of the lid. Okay, hey, let's get in a few tones in the middle of the shadows. We got slightly you know, warmer tones in here, color of the sky a little bit reflecting in there and some other tints and tones. Want to get that in. Some slightly darker colors on the bottom, which I'll get with some raw umber dark added to the darkest tones. See my array, I've got dark to light here on my palette. So now let's go ahead and get some uh, we get some shadows in. I need a little bit of a warmer color here. Just add some burnt sienna. And we'll just kind of blend this in on the bottom. Just make sure we've got all the dark tints that we need. Okay, on the top, have a little more red represented, and even just a bit of blue. We'll add some ultramarine blue to these colors on the top here. And let's put that in. Slightly warmer colors. Get her eyebrows in a little bit, a little bit darker. Uh, try to get the darkest colors here of, of the lips with ivory black and a little bit of lizard crimson. All right. Tie together the tones on the bottom of her chin. Get that shape adjusted, shadow under the lip. Now let's get the highlight on the neck. Pull that out from the upper tones here of our palette. Let's add a little bit of uh, raw sienna and Indian yellow to that as well. A 
slightly warmer color on it. Okay. Use, if I have my smaller round brush, try to get some shading in on her ear. Take some burnt sienna, um, natural red, amber dark. Mix them together. And uh, let's get a little bit of, just a little bit of colorization here for the ear. imagining what it might look like without the earpiece in. Now I'm going to get some darker tones for the hair, raw umber dark, lizard and crimson, a bit of ivory black, and uh, we'll pop that in right next to her ear here and just try to get some, just try to get some shading in there. A little bit of shading here in the back. Your hair. Okay. A little bit of shading up here. And on the top, just uh, got a slightly darker tone in here. And. Yeah, just darken that up on the top. A little bit of a cooler color with some ultramarine blue added in. And uh, we'll just kind of get that slightly darker area where it's darkest before the dawn, just darker right before the highlights on the top. And then add a little bit of naphthal red. Warm that up a bit just as the color is shifting. A little bit, just a bit, a little bit warmer is what I'm trying to say here. There we go. So getting that red in there as it's shifting into the lighter values, it can help intensify the realism. You have a couple of flyaway hairs in there, like that. Um, okay, let's see if we can block in her. Uh, clothing color really quick. We'll take um, ivory black, titanium white, try to use mostly mostly ivory black and then some ultramarine blue. Really nice dark coloring here for the clothing. Lock that in quickly as we can. We only have five minutes left here. Well, this is fun to really push yourself and see what you can accomplish in this time. All right, I'm going to let that be the shadow color. And then as we get into this area here, we have to mix a lighter color for that right side. So let's go ahead and Take the lighter color. I already actually have it on my palette because the first color I tried to mix for the shadow was a little too dark. Let's do the other camera. And just basically get that in just like that. Um, try to get in additional shading on the skin here. So on the bottom, get a little additional form. We've got that big tendon on her neck. And if I can get some of that portrayed in this time frame, I will. But when, when you're running out of time, you just have to prioritize. So this really kind of help you to prioritize what's most important in your portrait. Good lesson for our lives too. Okay, add a little bit of a 
shadow here. Under the jaw. Let's darken this, uh, darken this coloring a little bit on the lower part of her face. Really try to get those deeper, deeper skin tones in there. Let's get some more volume in the bottom half. Okay, now, a few minutes I have left, I'll see if I can refine a couple of areas on the interior here. Um, try to get the shadow for the inset of her eye here. Just add a little additional shading on the interior here. So we put that in, and then little more of the form on this side. There's a warmer color and it comes out a little further for this uh, eye socket. And then the coloring around her eye just a bit redder. I'll try to get that captured. I'll try to turn the form between the highlights and shadows on her cheek. I have just a bit of time there. Just get a little bit of a lighter area. Take some organic orange, the pyrrole orange and the Indian yellow and titanium white, and we'll just extend that uh, cheek a little bit right there. Let's see if I can extend there he is on the top a little bit. Some additional color information in there. And then, uh, have any more information on her lip? Here, we'll add that. Get the lip projecting out just a bit more. And a lot of my palette colors are drying up, but I'm going to try to add a little more detail to her lip here on the bottom. Just get those highlights in there. Maybe we can add a little bit of uh, information to her ear and just lighten that up a bit in a few key areas. All right, that's good. A little blending on the cheekbone area. All right. And I'm just going to paint until I hear the ticking stop, but that means I am just about done here. All right. And let's see if we can get the shadow here on the back of the clothing. I still hear ticking, so I'm going to keep painting until it stops. Okay, ticking is stopped, so I'm going to put my brush down and this is what we have for 30 minutes. You know, overall, I'm pretty happy with it, um, considering, you know, it was just a 30 minute portrait. I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, obviously there are some things I would like to do if I had more time. You know, I think, I, I think I made her nose a little bit larger than what it is. So she would not appreciate that if this was a commission, but that obviously, um, could be adjusted, but I like how the overall, um, highlights of the skin, skin tones versus the shadows worked out. I like the color. I like the warmth of her hair. Um, the overall gesture of her face, I think, was captured nicely. Lighting on her neck. And I think she just had such an interesting um, expression. And the lighting on her face was so nice. It really worked well for this portrait. So, 
yeah, overall, I'm, I'm quite happy with how this one turned out. Um, and, you know, again, with the 30 minute acrylic portrait, the goal is just to see what you can do in that time frame, not to make necessarily a finished portrait. But if you want to add more time to it, you certainly can. I, I see how I could add the, you know, the highlight to the eyelid on the bottom. And I just ran out of time on that. Um, but maybe I'll do, you know, some more 30 minute acrylic portraits where I put in another half an hour, you know, turn the timer on, see what I can do in that amount of time, then add another half an hour and maybe another half an hour. It really does speed up your process doing it this way. It's not quite as accurate. This doesn't necessarily work for, um, you know, really intricate compositions, but I think it can work well for simple portraits like this. Like I say, either as an exercise or as a foundation for another painting. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this 30 minute acrylic portrait. I would encourage you to try one of your own. I've seen a lot of students since I've been doing some more of these lately, trying their hands at 30 minute paintings and they've been doing a really, really great job, just phenomenal job. Um, so I think you could try it as well. And you know, it's, it's just you in your studio. And if you like it, great. Uh, if you don't, you can always learn from the process. I have some that I like better than others. So again, this is just a process to serve you as an artist, uh, to help you grow on your skills, but you might just end up doing a portrait you really, really like, and you're proud of even for 30 minutes. Um, get my free guide again, fix muddy skin tones in your acrylic portrait at the bottom here of the video. Love to help you out with your skin tones. And uh, again, just want to say thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next 30 minute acrylic portrait. God bless you and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.